Welcome back to 10 Memorable Corner Moments in Boxing. You believe in magic? They believe in Jesus. Magic. In this series, we take a close look at the 60 second intervals between rounds and also show you other memorable moments that took place in a boxing corner. After Floyd Mayweather dominated Arturo Gatti for six rounds, his uncle and trainer Roger Mayweather addressed the corner camera. I told y'all, you don't get that whoop. Oh, HBO. To the shock of many, Babe Shumanov trained himself and only had a cut man in his corner during a world title unification fight against Bernard Hopkins. And remember, there's Stitch Duran, who is a great cut man. Pretty eminent cut man. Yeah, and a great boxing mind, but there is no trainer here. No. He is thinking through and nobody's talking. He's thinking about what will I do next. I wonder what happens if he face adversity. Who would he go yeah. to for a second opinion? He will look inside Daniel. <laughs> Daniel son. <laughs> Needing a knockout to ensure victory, Avtandil Kurtzadiz's trainer, Gary Stark, gave him a Mike Tyson-inspired pep talk before the 10th and final round against Antoine Douglas. Get this kid, last round, 10 rounds. Avtandil, three minutes, he tired, he finished. You hear me? Give me this fight. Five at a time, five at a time, move, move, move. You hear me? Mike Tyson, baby. Mike Tyson. Hey, Let's go. Mike Tyson. Let's go, baby. Hey, Let's go. After touching gloves at the start of the round, Kurtzides quickly pinned Douglas against the ropes and landed a Tyson-esque left hook followed by a savage barrage of punches that left the referee with little choice but to step in and stop the fight. Well, it's been a clinic. Oh, again, Not right a big on one. top. Yeah, and this time, I don't know if Douglas could survive this. He can't hold. That's it, it's can't. over, that's it. Tell you what, Mike Tyson would be proud of this guy right here. <laughs> oh, yeah. And Wolf's ability to get the best out of James Kirkland in pre fight training camps and during fights seemed to make Kirkland an unstoppable force. He got the same mindset I got. Which is? Kill you. In that ring, kill. Smash. Take flesh off of your face. I want you to take your fist and try to put it through their skull. Most people go, oh my God. James go, what side? What side of his skull do you want me to put my fist through? Wolf's ability to get the best out of Kirkland was memorably on display in between rounds of Kirkland's 2013 fight against Glenn Tapia. Hey, go to the body. Kill that body. He took his nuts, now you gotta take his heart. Yeah, take his whole soul away. Tapia's taking punishment right now. The body language doesn't look good. He's got an iron chin because Kirkland is a good puncher. But the body language doesn't well, look no good. No one has right an there. iron body, and that's where Kirkland's really setting up those headshots. Fuck that. This your destiny, nigga. You hear Let's me? Let's get him. Get Go kick his motherfucker. Get that motherfucker right now. The problem is the corner knows how tough their guy is. They're being as tough as he is, but they need to protect him. If he moves over, he's about to do it. Away. His body seconds away. That's enough. He's that's about enough. to reach in. Oh, and he didn't need those last two. Right there at the moment when Kirkland landed a flush shot on the chin of Glenn Tapia, it's over. And Tapia's out on his feet right now. That was as James Kirkland as James Kirkland can get. Polly Malinaje's hair extensions repeatedly came loose and obstructed his vision during his 2008 fight against Love Morindo. He's going to have to do something about that hair. It's ridiculous. It's obscuring his vision at the moment. He's have to shake his head to get it out of his eyes. They're going to have to tie that up. It's not a fashion show, is it? This, this is a boxing match. The hair is all over the place again. I think it will sorely regret. I think Mickey Van is going to allow me fix the hair. After a timeout from referee Mickey Van, Malinaje's corner decided to take drastic action and cut the hair extensions off between rounds eight and nine. But I hope it's not a case of hair today. Title gone tomorrow. It's, it's all over the place again. It's a complete nonsense. Meanwhile, in the ring, they have taken the scissors to Malinaje's hair. It's gone. Drastic situations require drastic measures. It wasn't the hairdo he had in mind. They scalped him. 
At the end of the seventh round, Tim Austin's trainer, Aaron Snowell, yelled, it won't be long now, while pointing at Rafael Marquez's corner, which implied that Marquez was on his way to being stopped. Yeah, it won't be long now. It won't be long now. And Aaron uh, Snowell yelling across the ring at Marquez, it won't be long now. Well, I wouldn't feel that comfortable if it was a dangerous fight. Right. Three minutes later, the fight was over. But it wasn't Marquez who got stopped. It was Snowwell's fighter, Austin. Marquez has him. Marquez has him now. You have to remember that in one fight, that Tim Austin fought with a broken jaw and came back and won. But the fight is over. Stopping this one. And just three minutes after Aaron Snow haughtily yells, it won't be long now, Rafael Marquez proves him right. <laughs> In 1994, Michael Moorer challenged Evander Holyfield for the heavyweight championship of the world. In Moorer's corner for only the second time was trainer Teddy Atlas. Teddy Atlas, Michael Moorer's trainer. Atlas was a disciple of Customato. Very tough guy, and apparently he has got the attention of Michael Mora, but he can't fight the fight for him. After being knocked down in the second round and losing the third round, Atlas gave Mora an ultimatum in the corner. I want you to use that jab and I want you to work off it. I don't want you to be satisfied with it. You hear me? You go in there and you start backing this guy up and you start doing what we trained to do. Otherwise, don't come back to this fucking corner. Do you hear me? Let's go. He goes to the body. Holyfield trying to cover. Bring Brunel Whitaker and all the qualities that make Whitaker the best fighter in the world. The first thing Evander said was, well, he's left-handed. Now Holyfield in trouble again as the result of Moore's power punching. After initially being more aggressive in rounds four and five, Moore fought cautiously in rounds six through eight. Meanwhile, Moore hasn't been able to be as active in round six as he was in round five because Holyfield has given us more footwork, has begun to hold whenever possible. Suddenly the champion returns with initiative and vengeance. Fascinating that Moore isn't going all out to try to make his much vaunted punching power the difference in the bout. He seems content for the moment to try to box his way to the heavyweight crown. At the end of round eight, Moore came back to the corner and found Atlas sitting on his stool, offering to trade places with him. The question in my mind now is, can Moore win a championship this way? Does he have to show some passion and make something happen? Or can he just go along trying to win each round? Do you want me to change places with you? Do you? After giving Moore back his stool, Atlas delivered an emotionally charged pep talk. Listen, this guy is finished. Yo, it comes a time in a man's life. But he makes a decision, he makes a decision to just live, survive, or he wants to win. You're doing just enough to keep him off and hope he leaves you alone. You're lying to yourself because you're going to cry tomorrow. You're lying to yourself and I'd lie to you if I let you get away with that. You're going to cry tomorrow because of that. Do you want to cry tomorrow? Huh? Despite Atlas's angry lecture, Moore remained cautious and got another grilling in the corner at the end of the ninth round. Michael, you got three rounds left. You got 12 minutes left. You're blowing it. You're blowing it. I'm telling you, you're blowing it. And you know what? You're going to cry afterwards. You're going to cry afterwards. Because it's all there for you. He's going to lose his next fight instead of this fight. Moore's heavy hands beginning to show up. Left hook to the body, left hook to the head. Textbook Holyfield. Trading punches and bring it back home quick. Uppercut through the guard by Holyfield. Left hook to the body. Left hook, straight right, he eats a jab from Moore. Before the 12th and final round, the fight appeared to still be up for grabs. 
So Atlas gave Moorer a final motivational push in the corner. I want to tell you one thing. Get that time. Michael, in your mind, you're doing your That's best. Right, Michael, Have I ever lied to you? Michael, you're not doing your best. You're going to cry afterwards. He's, you're never going to have an opportunity again like this. You're throwing jabs and you're satisfied. You're satisfied just to do enough to keep him off you. You can't do that now. In this world, we can't do that all the time. Fight him, Michael. Under the 12. Michael Moore lands a solid jab and follows up to the body. Holyfield rocking back just a little bit. Right hand snaps Holyfield's head back. He'll pick the pace back up again, but he just miscalculated. Misjudged Moore. Holyfield coming back with the two weapons that have served him so well. Left hook, straight right hand, straight right hand, left hook. Brave chin that just doesn't need any more punches on it, Evander. Moore would end up winning the fight by a close majority decision. Michael Moore! There's Teddy Atlas. He's got a heavyweight champion now. Time for some more wild antics from John Ruiz's trainer, Norman Stone, who was involved in a brawl at Ruiz's pre-fight weigh-in with Roy Jones Jr.'s trainer, Alton Meckerson. On the night of the fight, Stone shouted and pushed Ruiz to press the action before verbally abusing referee Jay Nady. You gotta, Johnny, you gotta fucking do it. You gotta do this fucking Roy is doing everything, man. Come on. Norman Stone just called his fighter Roy. Think so? Yeah. He's doing it like this. Fight this motherfucker. This is it, John. Fight him. Go and get him. Go on, fight this fucking guy. He ends up. You think you go to the body, you come up to the head. Come up to the head. Fight him. Come on, Johnny. Fight him. He's taking your fucking title away from you. The referee sucks. All you work for. The ref sucks. Fight him. Fuck the referee! Come on, Get out there and fight him! Come on, fight him! Come on, the referee sucks! Come on, sucks. Come on, come on Drew. Fight this motherfucker! The referee sucks! The genteel stylings of Norman Stone in the Ruiz corner. Johnny, you gotta fight, man. Back the yourself, round. Back yourself on the corner now. The referee sucks! You're not going. You gotta go and knock him out. Come on. Johnny, you gotta go and knock this motherfucker out. There's no if there's about it. Come on, let's see what you're all about now. All right? Let's see what you're all about. Come on, come on, come on. One more round. Get out of our corner. Get out of our corner. Get out of our corner. Fight behind you. I'm going to fight that you better. I'm going to fight behind you. I'll take both of them and the other. He held the whole fight. Johnny, come on and go get him, Johnny. He held the whole fight. Come on. Keep him out there. Keep him out there. Come on. Right That's why you're pissed off at Cortez. You said you would have taken a point. Now I know. You're in the back. Come on. Come on. One of the good things that's happening is here, we'll never, probably never have to see Norman Stone again. That'd be good. Despite dominating Mike Tyson, Lennox Lewis's trainer, Emmanuel Stewart, felt that he was becoming complacent and read him the riot act at the end of rounds four and five. Pushing Tyson down, he gets a point deducted. You see the man is like this and you still doing this shit. Go to the Tyson. Come on. Get this motherfucker out of here, man. You can fuck around and get caught with some crazy shit. Step it up, the man is finished. It's ridiculous. You got a dead man in front of you and you still doing this. Just let that shit go. This fight is over with. You can fuck around and let him catch you with some shit if you don't watch. This man is dead out there, but he wants to quit. After six rounds of punishment from Gennady Golovkin, Gabriel Rosado couldn't see anything through his blood-covered face. No. Want me to stop it? No, no, no. Want me to no, 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 stop the fight, Jack? No, no, no. I don't stop it. And then the last round, right to the face of Rosado, cracked him up pretty good, and now Golovkin putting his power punches together. In round seven, Rosado continued to take punishment and bled badly until his trainer, Billy Briscoe, threw in the towel. The corner of Rosado stopping it. The, the, Steve Smoker's not hearing him. They, they throw in a towel. Steve, get in, Steve's, get in there. 
the inspector, the Rosado corner, did the right thing. After the fight, a replay showed Briscoe desperately pleading with Rosado's father, Gino, before the towel finally came in. That's how it ended. You see Briscoe telling Encarnacion Rosado, Gabriel's father, I have to stop this fight. That's a guy you want in your corner. I have to stop this fight. What you need is to keep going on and whoop the man. He's ready to be whooped, okay? Don't throw one and then let him get away. He can't figure you out. He's ready to be whooped, man. He's ready to be whooped. He's ready to be whooped. Man, don't let it 